I graduated MIT in 1953 with a BS in physics. And then I went to the University of Birmingham in England to do a PhD in 1956. I did not see my way to producing uh, really good science for a while, maybe four years. And uh, I, those four years were spent uh, just being unsure of myself. When I went to IBM in 1960, I met two physicists, Ted Schultz and Dan Mattis, and all of us discovered that we had an interest in actually proving things in a rigorous way. Things involving statistical mechanics and quantum mechanics and other things where there was a high mathematical component. We thought about uh, these things differently from the way most physicists did at the time. The theoretical physicist uh, typically uh, wants to get an answer. It's like going over stepping stones. He can jump when he feels like jumping as long as he gets to the other side. But in mathematical physics, you don't do that. If the final mathematical result is going to be effective, it's got to be completely rigorous. At Northeastern University, I managed to solve the problem of the entropy of ice. Imagine you have two-dimensional ice where the N oxygens are arranged in a two-dimensional lattice and in between every two oxygens, there sits a hydrogen atom with the constraint that two hydrogens must be close to every oxygen. The entropy of ice is then the logarithm of the number of hydrogenic configurations with this constraint. And the solution is four-thirds to the three-halves N where N is the number of oxygen atoms. That created a big stir at the time. I received an invitation to MIT's mathematics department in 1968. At MIT, I worked on the stability of matter. But the stability of matter is something that most physicists didn't care about. Because after all, matter is stable, we can hit it with a hammer. So what is, what is there to prove? First, there's the thermodynamic limit problem, which is that the volume of matter is proportional to the number of atoms. Joe Leibowitz and I managed to solve this problem. We invented something called the cheese theorem. You take balls of a certain size and put as many as you can in this domain you're trying to pack, and then you pack the missing space with those smaller balls which allows for an exponentially fast packing of a domain by spheres. The second aspect of stability of matter is how do we know that the energy of a system is proportional to the number of atoms in the system? We had to invent a piece of analysis called the leib tiering bound, which refers to the negative spectrum of the Schrodinger equation. This bound, which we eventually proved, Together with the Thomas Fermi theory work that I had done with Barry Simon would imply that the energy is proportional to the number of atoms. Sometimes things take a turn which is totally unexpected. For example, there's an algebra named after Neville Temporally and myself, which we discovered while working on a problem in quantum statistical mechanics. This is called the Temporally Lieb algebra it is useful in many areas like braids and knots and curves that are constrained not to intersect. I went to Princeton in 1974. While there in the 1990s, one big thing I did was with Jakob Ingvarsson, we revised the traditional understanding of the second law of thermodynamics and the meaning of entropy and its role. We even wrote a paper about this for the notices to receive the Conant Prize. The introduction of uh, pure mathematics into physics not only checks things, it can give rise to new directions and concepts in physics. Right now I'm 89, soon to be 90. I still do research every day and hope that maybe another good idea will hit me again. <laughs>